Hello and welcome to Competitive Crunch. My name is Spade and today on the 20th episode of CC, I am going to be looking back into Generation 5 competitive Pokemon battling. And the Gen 5 era lasted for 1120 days, counting from the original release of Black and Whites in Japan all the way till the international release of Pokemon X and Y. And the uh, Generation 5, it introduced 156 new Pokemon, 92 new moves, and 41 new abilities, and a bunch of items. And I wasn't really able to get the exact number because you have to include all the regular health items, then the medicines, and berries, and key items, and all such things. But on the competitive scene, there were still a bunch of great items, which I will be talking about in this video. Plus, all the other things, because this is kind of a absurdly large of a topic. So if I miss something, uh, excuse me, but these are the things that I remember from the Gen 5 battling. And also I made a kind of like a poll in my Facebook page asking for people what they thought. And then with that, I combined this list. I actually made this like months ago, but then I really never got into it until now because of things and stuff. But because this is absurdly large of a topic, I should uh, probably drive right into it. But I have basically combined myself, compiled myself a kind of like a top 10 list. Like a lot of these are not really in any specific order or they could be in a lot of a different order. But I kind of just wanted to, uh, you know, cut this again, absurdly large of a topic into smaller pieces and uh, then just go from there. And uh, now, without further ado, let's just drive into it and talk about what I got at number 10, which is the new Pokemon in Generation 5. And Gen 5 released a bunch of competitively good Pokemon. It was a really good year for Pokemon. Lots of awesome Pokemon. And uh, that list would include what I got here is uh, Volcarona. That was, uh, that was really the poster child of the... Uh, Butterfly dance move or the quiver dance and um, it was a really great Pokemon Like has these high high stats, but then um, What the problem was kind of was well Obviously mainly the stealth rock weakness and then it had somewhat of a limited coverage moves too But in black and white 2 it did gain like giga drain at least but still kind of limited coverage But you know the stealth rock weakness was the main thing that was really holding it back, but um on that note, like it had high stats and then, you know, awesome boosting move, one of the best in the entire meta game to kind of compensate for that. So it was, a, I think overall a great balanced Pokemon for the uh, singles meta game, definitely. And then we have the Genies, um, Landorus, Tornadus and Thunderous, and also their Therian forms. And on the Smogon meta game, in fact, half of them got banned. Uh, Thunderous and Landorus and, um, Tornadus Therian, because they were just way too overpowered for the metagame, but uh, competitively still really good Pokemon, and some of them, half of them were just too overpowered for the Smogon metagame, but all of them on their own ways were really great Pokemon. And then we got the Kieran forms, uh, and the uh, title legendaries, Zekrom, Reshiram, most of them were in the Ubers, but then Kieran, the regular one, and the uh, Kieran Black were kind of chilling in the OU tier. The regular Kieran was kind of restricted and it was kind of stuck in the BL tier, which was kind of unfortunate for it. But uh, what you gonna do? It was, you know, I, I guess the bad defensive typing and the lack of really good moves and well, the boosting moves, I think was the main problem. And then the Kieran Black thing was, you know, powerful physical attacker without a good a physical ice move that was the main problem a reliable one because it had to rely on that charging move but anyways uh then we got uh Jellicent and ferrathon this uh dynamic defensive duo from the beginning of the uh, gen 5 era uh they were never really as popular as something as uh Scarm bliss was in uh generation 4 but they were still a really good solid defensive uh pokemon in uh generation 5 and, you know, they did have this natural synergy because they do resist each other's uh, weaknesses. And uh, 
Also, uh, Ferrathon can be setting a bunch of entry hazards, spikes and stealth rock, and then uh, Jellison can help by spin blocking. But, um, you know, Jellison was definitely a good bulky water spin blocker. That was kind of something that we haven't really seen. That kind of defensive um, combination. I mean, that kind of type combination was not seen. And the same thing with Ferrathon. And Ferrathon was a real trooper in Generation 5, as we remember. 11 different uh, resistances. That, 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 that's one of the best defensive typings in the entire metagame, coupled with the awesome support moves that it had with all those entry hazards and uh, lead seed. And, uh, you know, this Pokemon was set to go and it was well, it was also able to retaliate with the uh, Power Whip and um, a Gyro Ball mainly. But then moving on, um, got Chandelure and Darmanitan, uh, both of them really um, high special and physical attackers respectively and uh, I think Darman, Darmanitan, both of them had a lot of momentum going at the beginning of the metagame but then I think Darmanitan kind of faced competition from Victini which had lower attack but then again Victini had that powerful recreate to kind of compensate for it and then it was kind of, well Victini had higher base speed so there was that natural competition between uh, these two and then Victini was also able to go mixed Although they kind of play differently, but they, they are both kind of uh, high uh, attacking, offensive, fire types, uh, which both have like decent natural block, especially Victini. But, you know, with, with, with Victini that kind of suffered from bad defensive typing. But still, I, I think Darmentum faced competition from Victini, which eventually meant that it kind of dropped down to the UU tier. And then with Chandelure, that thing had a lot of uh, momentum going on with its absurdly high special attack. And uh, first of all, uh, the, the thing was with Chandelure was that uh, it was supposed to have Shadow Tag and people were really excited about it at the beginning of the metagame. But then like, what, two, almost three years later, we still haven't gotten uh, Shadow Tag Chandelure and maybe it was best for the metagame because we all know how dangerous Shadow Tag is. And the thing is with Chandelure, you can slap a scarf on it, make kind of an ultimate revenge killer. And then, um, it also had a boosting move in form of Calm Mind, so you could, you could have like sub Calm Mind and that thing would have been broken as heck. So maybe it was best for the meta that the, that the Shadow Attack Chandelure was never released, but it definitely hurt Ch Chandelure's momentum and it kind of dropped into Yu Yu meta game, but it was still a really solid Pokemon, nevertheless. And then, then I got uh, Sir Perrier here. I thought I would mention it also, like coupled with the uh, Chandelure, because it never got the um, contrary ability, because people were really excited about the uh, Leaf Storm contrary. Uh, basically, a 140 base power grass type move, stab, coupled with inbuilt nasty plot. That sounded really broken on paper, but we never even got to see Superior with contrary in action. But who knows if that's going to happen in the Gen 6 metagame. Because uh, Superior now also has access to Dragon Pulse. It really had limited coverage, but in Black and White 2 it did gain Dragon Pulse, so it would be kind of interesting to see this thing in action. But the uh, contrary Leaf Storm would be um, really interesting to see how that would actually work out, but we never really got the chance. Uh, then we got Reuniclus. Um, in a way, it was kind of like a better version of Cresselia, because Cresselia. Cresselia never uh, was really good in Gen 5 OU and Reuniclus has had a couple couple things over Cresselia. First off, like usually when you see Cresselia, you just toxic it. Well, Reuniclus has Magic Guard and that also means that it's immune to all sorts of entry hazards. So that was a great asset for it. And also it had reliable recovery in form of recover as Cresselia had to rely on uh, Moonlight. Because uh, especially in the weather dominated meta game, that was really bad because Moonlight was held down by weather. Uh, although, you know, there was sun, but you know, we all know how that worked out. So, Reuniclus had recover and also higher special attack and cover with Calm Mind. Uh, it was, it was, it was, it was really sturdy, interesting. Psychic type Pokemon that had plenty of options going for it. You know, Psyshock, Focus Blast, Shadow Ball. You got the coverage right there, coupled with um, coupled with uh, what you might call it, uh, 
with calm mind or trick room and then you might might want to slice recovery in there and uh, you had really interesting bulky uh, defensive bulky well it, it, it kind of represented bulky offense but uh, interesting Pokemon regardless and was kind of it had a couple attributes that uh, Cresselia could have never even dreamed of and then we got Kongolder uh, kind of just the the gen 5 Machamp kind of was kind of just a better Machamp. It had Mock Punch, it had Drain Punch, and you know, I, th I think it was slightly bulkier. Although, like, I think Machamp's special defense was slightly better. But you know, you combine this thing with Bulk Up, and uh, you know, you were good to go. But Drain Punch, Mock Punch were the things that Machamp, Machamp never, for whatever reason, didn't get. And then they introduced Kongolder, which was just basically a copy of Machamp. With better moves, and uh, continuing on the fighting types, Mian Shao. That thing had some good momentum at the beginning of the meta game, and uh, really interesting scouting Pokemon uh, with Regenerator and Life Orb and Fake Out. You can just fake out and U turn, and you keep on doing that. And then we got Scrafty, interesting uh, fighting dark type. I don't think we had any fighting dark types before Scrafty, and that that's a really good. Uh, uh, offensive uh, combination because dark and uh, dark fighting hits a lot of things for neutral damage uh, but Scrafty didn't really have the highest attack and that was kind of slow uh, it did have good bulk but um, in the end uh, me and Shao and Scrafty kind of ended up um, dropping down to the UU tier even though they were kind of solid OU Pokemon at the beginning of the meta game, but uh, still in the end, kind of mediocre. And there were just a bunch of fighting types in general in uh, Generation Five. And continuing on the fighting types, speaking of, we got the Musketeers, the legendary Pokemon, mainly Terrakion and Keldeo. Terrakions, we all remember Terrakions. Uh, rock fighting coverage one does not simply take those and switch into those moves even if you resist and even if you're a skarmori you have to be scared of something like choice bandit stab close combat from terrakion and it was just overall a really dangerous pokemon only few things like skarmori could really uh, or not even skarmori but glyscore mainly could uh safely switch into and even uh even uh even Gliscor, you know, if it has taken prior damage and if it's not able to protect enough times, you know, it's going to be in trouble against uh, Terrakion. But uh, then we had Verizion and Cobalion. Uh, Verizion, or Verizion, however you want to pronounce it. I'm sure somebody will take offense to mispronouncing a fictional character's name. But uh, disregarding that fact, uh, Verizion was OU for quite some time. Uh, I think for a good part of the BW era, but then when the uh, generation or the what am I saying the black and white 2 era hit um, you know it was really nowhere to be found it kind of dropped down to the UU tier and Cobalion was never really a solid OU Pokemon to really begin with but it did find its place in the underused tier and then if we want to talk more about fighting types who could forget yet another firefighting starter Embor and yeah, well, that thing didn't really do much. And then it was also Salk and Throw. But just to name, just to mention the fact that there was just a bunch of fighting types. And that's why kind of like uh, me and Shao and Scrafty that were really good Pokemon. They just kind of got lost in the shuffle because so many good fighting types. So they just didn't really have plays in the Hoyu in the end. And then we had some... Uh, Awesome Dragons, Hydreigon and Haxorus. Uh, interesting duo. Hydreigon had base speed of 98, but it didn't have Dragon Dance. But then Haxorus was uh, base speed 97, but that thing had Dragon Dance. That was kind of interesting. And then Hydreigon was, well, that thing was obviously more of a special attacker. But what made Hydreigon really dangerous was the fact that uh, it could go mixed, uh, which in the end basically meant that it was practically uncounterable because of its potential mixed nature, which honestly was not abused to its fullest potential, but it was still a really dangerous Pokemon. And then Haxorus had that absurdly high 147 physical attack, a real power creep. And uh, you couple that with uh, Dragon Dance or Sword Dance, you can do some really dangerous sweeping or uh, sweeping or uh, just wall breaking. But you know, Haxorus is, Haxorus is 
uh, base 97 uh, speed that was the real downfall of, of downfall of it because 97 is not really the best because a lot of the common base 100 scarfers could uh, still outspeed it but it was truly a power creep and then we have a good old Genesect, who could forget? And that thing didn't last too long in the OU tier. That thing was just as versatile as heck. It was, you know, it was, it quickly became the number one used Pokemon in the Smogel metagame. And it was just, it was just so versatile. It could do anything. It, it, it has the mixed potential and it has the download ability, was, which was crazy and led to a point where people were specifically adjusting their uh, defensive IVs to give it the wrong, usually the physical attack boost because it's uh, a special mopole was what made it uh, truly dangerous, but it could still go mixed and you were seeing some sort of, some of the choice banded Genesect, which was really cool too, but, but that thing was way too versatile. Also awesome typing, so it could take some hits to an extent, but mainly the uh, mixed and unpredictable nature of it it had moved to it had moves to destroy the entire meta game and that's why it kind of got banned and then my personal favorite victini would recreate that was an awesome pokemon i liked it it was never really a top tier pokemon because it was uh it, the the defensive typing that's what kind of hurt it uh psychic and fire was really bad defensively because it was kind of pursued trappable really easily and uh while it had options to go mixed, you know, it, it still wasn't really the greatest thing and that's why it was kind of a UU Pokemon. You know, Psychic and Fire, offensively interesting combination. Also, it had awesome moves like Thunder, especially with the ability Victory Star, that was kind of cool, but uh, it was never really a top tier OU po Pokemon and it could run that gimmicky Trick Room set, which was kind of cool with the V Create and everything, but uh, it was still kind of too fast to really uh, efficiently run that but Victini had its uh, good points but it was still never really a top tier Pokemon and uh, then I would also like to mention the new Rotoms because uh, in generation 4 all the Rotom forms they were uh, ghost and electric or electric and ghost I don't remember which way around but basically the same thing but in generation 5 uh, depending on the special move each form got they also changed the ghost typing into that respective um, type of the special move. So, for example, Rotom Wash being the uh, uh, water and electric type, or electric water, and uh, Rotom Wash was arguably the best out of the Rotoms because it was a great defensive typing, only one weakness to uh, grass combined with the levitate, although, of course, there's more breakers, but they're situational gimmicky stuff that you only run against like stuff like Haxorus and I guess Kieran Earth Powering, I don't know. Kieran Black Earth Powering. But anyways, uh, for the most part, you only have uh, one weakness that you need to worry about, which is Grass, which is not that common of an offensive typing to begin with. So that was a great asset for uh, Rotom. So it kind of, Rotom Wash kind of turned from a primary spin blocker in Gen 4 into a bulky water in generation 5 which was interesting and it had all these nice support moves in form of uh, uh, Willow Wisp and uh, Pain Split and uh, Trick and uh, yeah it could perform a, perform its role as a bulky supporter or then it could be offensive with, uh, with, with, with like Scarf or Specs it was a really versatile Pokemon but it was kind of a Pokemon that you could basically throw on any team, kind of like Genesect, but not as broken pretty much. And it, it was good with the wall switch moment gaining, much like Genesect was uh, with U-turn, but again, Genesect was kind of OP and Rotom was still kind of a nuisance only. And then a couple of more Pokemon that I would kind of like to mention were Sigilyph and Chinchino, although they were never top tier Pokemon, they were kind of something uh, different. You know, Chinchino had an awesome move pool and uh, and an ability to abuse that move pool because it had all these multi-hitting moves like Tail Slap, Bullet Seed and Rock Blast coupled with Technician and Skill Link and uh, there were not too many Pokemon that had all these coverage um, multi-hitting moves like Chinchino but unfortunately Chinchino kind of had mediocre stats and that's why it was never really good but Game Freak, you know, it tried. they tried to do something uh, different from your typical sweepers and have this kind of a unique Pokemon that abuses its uh, 
abuses this these not so often seen moves coupled with this ability so it was kind of cool to see and then Sigilyph was its own whole different story this weird unknown looking totem pole and uh, it had this the most effective set that you could really run on it that no other Pokemon that really could was the one with the uh, Flame Warp and uh, Psycho Shift, uh, Cosmic Power, Roost, and then, um, whatchamacallit, uh, Stored Power. Really no other Pokemon that could pull this set off. And it had the, uh, also the Magic Guard, that's why it, you could run a uh, Flame Orb on it. So that made Sigilov into a really unique Pokemon, but in the end it was still only a gimmick. That's why it remained in the lower tiers. Of RU. Same thing with Chinchino. I think both of them ended up being in the RU tier in the end of uh, Gen 5 era. But they were both kind of interesting gimmicks. But unfortunately, that was not enough for them to be higher tier Pokemon. But still cool Pokemon regardless. And then we move on. As I have rambled for a long, long time th already. This will be a long video. Most likely, I will cut this into two parts. Although I wouldn't like to, because this is kind of like one big entity that I was hoping to do on one take. But um, yeah, I think I will just have to. There's just so many things. This is, again, absurdly large of a topic, so we move on. Uh, number nine, um, I got uh, Dragon vs. Steel Dominant Metagame. Uh, which is, I, I guess, kind of a vague point, because in a way, it, it's really nothing new that Gen 5 really brought. Because, you know... Dragons and uh, you know steels trying to deal with them was kind of a thing in uh, Generation Four too, but in Gen Four a lot of the common dragons uh, got banned and um, in Gen Five they basically returned. But I don't know, maybe it was overall the hyper offensive, overall more offensive nature of the Gen Five meta game that uh, made all these uh, kind of absurdly powerful dragons stay in the uh, uh stay in the OU tier because gotta say overall uh, like you could say that the um uh the generation 5 uu uh, tier was like the generation or uh, generation 4 ou tier so gen 5 uu was kind of like the gen 4 ou and then gen 5 ou kind of was this really hyper offensive meta game or offensive meta game where you had all these power creeps and it was really difficult to really directly counter anything you kind of had to rely on checking most of the things and that was kind of the name of the name of the uh, uh, gen 5 meta game coupled with the fact that stealth rock still the best move in the game but if we go back into the dragon steel dominant meta game we have such dragons as uh, salamence guard chomp latias latios and all those uh, dragons got banned in Generation 4 metagame, but now they returned. And Garchom actually got a funny story, he got banned in Generation 5, but then he got back into the OU metagame with the ban of the Sand Veil ability. Because that was kind of the, the last nail in the coffin uh, for Garchom getting banned, the Sand Veil, because half of the time you can't even hit it, so that was really a nuisance. But... Um, with the introduction of Dream World abilities and everything getting released, uh, Smogon was finally able to make the, make the decision of just banning the Sand Whale uh, by itself while it doesn't get make something like Sand Slash Uber because Sand Slash gained the Sand Rush ability from the Dream World and thus they were able to make this ban of uh, just getting uh, rid of the Sand Whale and making Garchomp in the uh, OU tier available again. But all those Pokemon Men's Garchomp, uh, Lati Twins uh, got banned in Gen 4. Now they're back with their shenanigans in the Generation 5 metagame and they kind of did dominate it. And uh, speaking of dominant dragons, uh, we got Dragonite, of course. That was probably the most used uh, dragon of uh, Generation 5 because of its uh, awesome multi scale ability in Gen 5. And then we also got Haxorus High Dragon, also mentioned, already mentioned those, and then the Kirin forms to and uh you know that is what kind of led into a dragon heavy meta game and um then of course if we talk about steel types we have uh scissor jirachi ferrothorn fortress heatran lucario skarmori uh, magnezone 
Metagross, Excadrill and Genesect and the last two of course they they were deemed too powerful for the metagame and they ended up getting the Banhammer Excadrill with the Sand Rush and uh, uh, speaking more of the uh, highly offensive metagame that was reminded to me by Excadrill really OP Pokemon especially coupled with the Sand Rush basically being faster than most Scarfers and even Deoxys speed that was really absurd absurd but uh, with the weather dominant metagame definitely that was something that brought more offense to the metagame because you had rain boosted hydro pumps everywhere and then you no know, well, I guess sun sun was never that dominant but you had chlorophyll sweepers and fire boosted V creates and fire blast and all that stuff that led into a more uh, dominant offen offensively dominant uh, meta game at least that's how i see it but the most of the steel types that i mentioned the problem with them of course was that you know most of them just get destroyed by a fire blast or eq or both either or and uh that was kind of the problems and that's why dragons were never really uh countered by the steel types and uh but I'm glad that we do have fairy types in Gen 6 now, although they're kind of not um, really that threatening. But anyways, I'm not here to talk about uh, Gen 6 today. So I think I'm going to be moving on to the next point because I got so many points here. I would kind of like to keep these things short, yet bring some of my thoughts into this. But yeah, uh, moving on. Number eight. Um, on this, I'm going to be... Uh, Kind of talking about the effort value system although it was not really uh, changed that much uh, when it comes to EV training and uh, IV braiding uh, it was especially IV braiding it was it was still as redundant as it was in the in the past not nothing really changed on that note but a uh, few little things I guess they did was uh, I think in black and white too there they um, had these nursery skills from the whatchamacallit, the, I think it was the joint avenue that made for a faster hatching. You had different like skill levels, I think like at least three of them. So that was the thing, although that wasn't really much. We really needed something like in Gen 6, but uh, thank goodness for Gen 6. But let's not talk about that again. Back to Gen 5. And I think they also changed the. Uh, uh, EV reducing berries. So instead of uh, reducing hundred points, they only reduced uh, di uh, uh, reduced uh, ten points. Uh, honestly, not that big of an impact. And then also they had the effort value wings like the health wing, resist wing, muscle wing, uh, all those stuff that increased your EVs by one point. But the mo the main thing that I want to talk about was the fact that uh, they changed the effort value system so that. Uh, you get effort values even at level 100 and the stats are basically just recalculated after uh, each battle instead of uh, you know after you level up like it was back in generation 4 and what this meant was that when there were some event pokemon released at level 100 that you weren't able to ev train properly in the past now you were able to do that and that basically meant that you were able to for the most part, I think the biggest impact it had was the fact that you could properly EV train, EV train Arceus. And that was definitely a big thing because Arceus in Gen 4 could only run uh, base 100 EVs in every stat because of the vitamins. You could never properly EV train it, but now you could. But the big impact definitely is that uh, now you can, whenever there was an event Pokemon in level 100, you could properly EV train it. And I think later on there were some Deoxys forms with like nasty blood, I think those were re released and you could probably EV train those. And then the uh, extreme speed Genesect with like shift gear and uh, extreme speed blaze kick, you could probably EV train that thing. So uh, if it wasn't for this mechanic, you would have, would not have been able to fully utilize those Pokemon. And uh, I think that, w well, while it didn't really have too big of an impact for the uh, OU metagame as most of the event Pokemon that got released were that were at level 100 where all these OP legendary Pokemon but still uh, I think it's a cool mechanic and something that is still in generation 6 so in case in the future there is something that gets released at level 100 at least we do not need to worry about uh, not getting them properly EV trained because we can 
do so. And with that, we move on to point number seven, which is more interesting stuff, mechanic changes. And first, what I got here are the sleep mechanics. And in generation five, as we all know, the sleep turns a reset. So if you, sw if you sleep for one, for one turn and then you switch out, uh, you, the sleep turns resets and the counter resets and you have to start trying to wake up from a scratch, which kind of sucked for a bunch of rest users, which made rest even more of an unreliable move because you couldn't just rest up and then, you know, burn one turn and come back in later, burn one turn again, because now the sleep turns would reset. And that also made uh, sleep, uh, sleep talk users a bit more uh, unreliable and, uh, you know, rest talkers and stuff like that. And I'm going to have a zip of water because I've been talking for so long already and I got plenty more to go. But um, yeah, that was a, definitely a great thing for things like uh, Among Us and uh, Brilo mainly. Uh, they were able to put things to sleep and it was really uh, more difficult to switch out as uh, you couldn't just burn sleep turns and switch out. Uh, but then the next thing, I, which is arguably I think the biggest mechanic change in generation 5 was the nerf of explosion and in gen 4 and in, and in the past generation explosion would have your opponent's defense so it was basically a 500 base power move because it was you know while it said it was 250 base power in the past it would have your defense your opponent's defense and that basically meant that um if you look at the generation four movesets on pretty much like all the Pokemon that would have explosion could run it. It was a good move on them. So it was on that note, it was kind of a broken move because you could just slap it on any Pokemon and it would be good because it would have your defense. It was really, when you think about it, 500 base power move. It was always that last ditch effort move on something like Focus Sash, Azelf. You would uh, get your rocks up and then just explode or get your rocks up, destroy something with powerful psychic ice beam or something like that, then blow up. And it was always, it was just always a good filler move on any Pokemon. And on that note, it was kind of broken. And in Gen 5, that got nerfed and uh, it no longer has your defense, but it definitely had a big impact because you didn't have those suicide explosion needs like you did in uh, Generation 4. Of course, there were a few other things leading up to the nerf of uh, suicide leads, but I'll talk about that um, later. But still kind of, I don't know, I kind of miss explosion because it was always a cool move. And then um, in Gen 4, it was so awesome to, uh, just one random story here. It was so, so awesome to either protect on the explosion or uh, then just uh, switch out into a ghost type, predicting the obvious explosion. But, you know, it was one of those really, there are two things that are extreme, extremely satisfying in Generation 5 metagame that were also in Gen 4. But unprotected focus punch and then successful pursuit on the switch in. In Generation 4, you could put a uh, successful uh, explosion blocking on that list. But in uh, Generation 5, that was no longer a thing. But anyways, that was my random story with the explosion and... Uh, we move on to more uh, mechanic changes, which that, that is next on the list. One of the also bigger changes in Gen 5 metagame. And uh, as that got more, that more got, you know, in a way buffed up because uh, instead of healing uh, uh, the receivers or receivers, 50% of the whoever Pokemon uh, receives the wish, it will basically heal 50% of whoever used the wish. So that led into Wish Blissey being one of the best wish passers in the entire metagame because it can pass down wishes that grant you over 300 HP. And that was really incredible. And that made a lot of wish passers like Vaporeon, Blissey, and I guess Elimomola. And um, I don't really remember. I just think about Blissey and Chansey really when it comes to... Oh, that's honestly the... The worst, the worst, and the first thing that really comes to your mind when you think about wish passing. But uh, that was a really interesting mechanic change, and uh, that made uh, Wishy and Chansey, Wish Blissey, Wish Chansey more popular than they were in the past. It was a really interesting mechanic change for sure. 
And then we got a uh, storm drain and lightning rod and um, storm drain de definitely was a big thing for gastrodon but uh, basically instead of being useless abilities uh, in the singles meta game and even in the doubles pretty much uh, those abilities uh, storm drain would absorb water type moves uh, and grant you water type immunity and give you plus one special attacks so instead of doing like practically nothing it's suddenly a really great ability and then lightning, lightning rod obviously absorbing uh, electric type moves and uh, turning them into plus one attack lightning rod didn't have honestly that big of an impact and zapdos that would have had it <laughs> also never got that ability which you know could have had a slight impact but um uh what which pokemon like i i only thing that really comes to my mind was like manectric but lightning rod never had that big of an impact but uh, storm drain on gastro i think that was the biggest impact and then we move on because I got so many things. I could talk about Lightning Rod more and I could remember all the Pokemon that got it and talk about them. But uh, no, not today. Too many things to talk about. Uh, next we got Growth and that got buffed up to increase uh, your attack and special attack by one stage. And in the sun it would increase your uh, special attack and attack by two stages. So that was a really cool thing, especially for Venusaur that got... Um, also all sorts of other buffs that i will talk about later but uh yeah that's that that's a i think venusaur definitely was the biggest abuser of it and also some other chlorophyll users that could you that you could use if you don't want to necessarily use uh venusaur so that is a thing and then tail glow got buffed up to plus three um yeah Manaf that made manaphy even more broken uh, than it was in the past and it's interesting that they buffed up Tail Glow because Manaphy is still like the only Pokemon that gets it and Manaphy is, is already so good. So I don't really understand. But Manaphy was, you know, it was tested in, in the beginning of the Gen 5 era in the OU meta game, but it certainly didn't last there for too long. And plus three Tail Glow certainly did not help. And then next on the mechanic changes, Sturdy got buffed up and uh, instead of just blocking one hit KO moves that kind of suck anyways, especially in the competitive scene. They are pretty much banned because they are just completely relying on luck and they are stupid. So yeah, instead of kind of being a useless ability on the competitive scene, uh, now it basically works as a focus sash. So that was really cool. Although multi-hitting moves, they would break it. Something that was also changed from the past. Because in the past, you know, focus sash, if you hit it with bullet seeds, five of them, and you bring it, so let's say you have a focus set Gastrodon or Swampert for who knows whatever reason. You hit that in Gen 4 with a bullet seed, you bring it down to one HP and you keep going for like five times. It will still, if Swampert has focus sash, it will live with one HP, but that, that is no longer the case in uh, generation five. And the same thing with Sturdy. If you, uh, if you are able to uh, knock a sturdy Pokemon with five hits, uh, the sturdy will not uh, save you, but from one single hit it will, and I uh, definitely made uh, something like Scaramori more useful because you were able to uh, guarantee to at least get off that one entry as a layer, and that also made for interesting Kusta Berry user because you could live, uh, you were guaranteed to live one hit with the sturdy, and then Kusta Berry were, would would activate, and you would get off your second layer, so. Go for Stealth Rocks and then go for Spikes and you have your quick suicide lead for your hyper offensive team and you are ready to go. But that was definitely an interesting change, mechanic change. And we move on. Although Bullet Seed and Icicle Spear, I do believe, at least Bullet Seed got buffed up in base power. So that was kind of cool. I do believe Icicle Spear too. But anyways, uh, we move on. Uh, extreme Speed got buffed up from plus one priority to plus two, which was uh, definitely interesting because it is already the most powerful priority but then again it's a normal type move and it's not super effective against anything so i don't know i guess they kind of felt like they should buff up the extreme speed and it, you know it's the extreme speed it's the fastest of the fast so you've got to have something going on for it uh, outside of all the other priority moves and then fake out got uh, pr uh, plus three priority it was plus one in the past now it's uh, plus three I don't know if that could change in Gen 6. I don't think so. But let's not talk about Gen 6. We're talking about Gen 5. So it got buffed up to uh, plus 3, 
plus three priority, so you could out prioritize some uh, weaker priority moves, and that could definitely in some cases make a difference. And you know, things like, um, well, fake out is mostly seen on like something like, I, I guess, me and Shell, uh, Hariyama, those are the two things that come to my mind. I, and there are plenty of more, but I don't want to talk about it. Just want to talk about the changes and what happened, and we move on. Uh, Protect got buffed up from plus three to plus four, so you could uh, block the fake out, I guess. So I guess they did it for that reason, but you know, something that you may or may not have known. Random trivia on some random mechanic changes. And then I think like uh, Magma Storm and Toxic got their accuracy boosted up a little bit in Generation 5. I, I, you know, I guess that was a nice thing for Toxic because, you know, it, I think it hmm, was it 90? No, it wasn't. Was it 95 in Gen 5? I, I don't remember, but the accuracy did get boosted up. I do remember that much. So I kind of wrote it down, but I didn't write down how much it got. And now it will bother me, so I will actually go and just quickly uh, check it from good old Pulpapedia, because it shouldn't take too long. Let's type down Toxic here on the search engine, but it did get... And there are a bunch of other moves that got little uh, accuracy accuracy changes and uh, stuff like that. But, uh, no, I, I figured I would I just mention all the major ones. Maybe I missed a few, but... Uh, these are this is the list that I I got here. I, I guess uh, well I do have well I do have more some more some more mechanic changes here. So I'll keep on talking about it while I look for the toxic thing. But uh, life or recoil. Um, in the past um, you took or, or you didn't take life or recoil when you would break substitutes. So now you actually would. So you could actually life or stall with subs. So that was another kind of little interesting mechanic on the competitive players that you could now take advantage of. But it was kind of weird that in Gen 4, when you hit a sub with Life Orb, it would not give you Life Orb Recoil, which, which was kind of cool, but at the same time kind of weird. But in Gen 5, that got changed. And then uh, Magic Coat, that thing uh, got buffed up and uh, it uh, basically bounces, uh, now bounces back like Taunt and uh, also like entry hazards and all that stuff. So that was a really nice buff for it. And something like Deoxys Defense could definitely play shenanigans with that uh, for the time being when it was Oh, you And now I'm having trouble with Bulbapedia and it's not connecting me for some random reason. I don't know what's going on over there, but whatever, we, we move on. And uh, got Encore, that move got uh, nerfed because uh, in the past it was like between three to seven turns, which basically guaranteed you Whenever you got on court in Generation 4, you had to switch out. Otherwise, your opponent can easily take advantage of you. But in Generation uh, 5, it was only for three turns. So you basically, after you on court and then you switch out, you have like one turn to act. And if your opponent is locked into something like Dragon Dance, you definitely need to act. And that made uh, on court just more unreliable than uh, it was in the past. So. That's the thing, but Encore kind of got nerfed in Generation 5. And then Disable got buffed up, and uh, it was 100 accuracy instead of something like 75 or something really unreliable. unreliable. And uh, the biggest impact, of course, was Sub Disable Gengar. And then we got High Jump Kick, uh, which uh, got boosted from 100 base power into 130. And we, I think we all remember how dangerous that made uh, good old blaze again and it just became a really really op pokemon and uh, had that high high base power fighting type move now with basically no drawbacks except when it misses but that was you know that's a whole whole different story but High Jump Kick, you know, it definitely had an impact on the Pokemon that did get it. But of course, the thing is that High Jump Kick kind of had limited distribution. There were like many Cham and uh, Hitmon Lee, of course, and uh, I think a few other. Uh, Mian Shao, yes. I think those are the biggest ones. I might be missing a few good ones, but uh, whatever. Uh, move on. Uh, Giga Drain and Drain Punch got buffed up from 60 base power to 75. And uh, that definitely showed in Generation 4, these moves were not really common at all. 
but in generation five you saw these moves definitely a lot more i i definitely personally really liked um a bulking up a Gallade and on a lot of bulk up Pokemon, especially like Congolder, you were often seeing Drain Punch and then uh, Giga Drain Celebi was a thing and uh, Venusaur was running uh, a Giga Drain when he got it in uh, Black and White 2, I think. And definitely. And now finally, Bulbapedia is working for me, so that's awesome. Um, Toxic got buffed up to 90 accuracy, I think it was, I think it must have been 85. What does it say? Is there a mention about it? Yeah, 85 uh, up till generation 4. So it got buffed up to 90. Okay, now that will not, not bother me. But I think now I went through most of the changes that I wanted on the mechanics. And I'm going way too long. So I will move on to part number 6. And where I'm going to be talking about items. Yes, generation 5 introduced law introduced a lot of interesting items including the elemental gems and i think they had a, a bigger impact in the doubles meta game where they were kind of spammed all around singles not that much but you know flying gem acrobatics that was like one of the coolest things especially with the few things that could abuse it uh with unburden or all the gems like hit him on the fake out unburden uh, acrobatic septile physical sword stance that was kind of cool in the lower tiers but uh, flying gem acrobatics, that was probably one of the most common things. And then uh, I guess in the singles me meta game, the things with the elemental gems were, you know, mostly gimmicks because of the nature of the um, because of the nature of the singles. It is so easy to just end up wasting because you have something like fire boosted, uh, uh, fire gem boosted, fire blast, and then your opponent ends up going into a water type, and then you just kind of end up wasting it. Of course, you can do some really interesting wall breaking. Like I remember running like Rock Gem, uh, Sword Dancing Terrakion to uh, destroy uh, incoming incoming Gliscors, and on some instance, instances it definitely helped. Although I think if if it was like max defensive Gliscor, you could still take it. But the common toxic stalling thing that ran a ran a bunch of uh, speed, you could still like end up destroying that thing. Although, I guess you could run Calx. Maybe it wasn't the best thing, and definitely Rock Gem Terrakion wasn't really too common, but it was, it was still kind of a gimmicky thing, mostly in the singles, but it was definitely a nice addition. You got that one time, 1.5 times the boost, and uh, you definitely had to play it carefully, but I'm not really sure what happened in uh, Generation 6, because they ended up nerfing the gems, and you can't even find most of them. So, I don't know. I guess they... Nintendo was like, hey, the uh, gems are kind of broken in doubles because people are spamming them. You should nerf them, and Game Freak did. I don't know, but again, not talking about Gen 6 anymore. So um, we move on with more items. With my precious air balloon. He ran on a balloon. Oh, that was, that was certainly one of the biggest impacts that uh, the air balloon had. Uh, the air balloon heat ran. Because four times weak to ground and having the immunity uh, to ground type attacks was definitely a huge, a huge thing for Heatran. Of course, the biggest uh, setback is that uh, if uh, you get hit with anything uh, except for entry hazards, the balloon will pop and you will not have item for the rest of the match. But still, the immunity for the time being was a great asset for it. And uh, then there were like, I think Air Balloon uh, Terrakion was... But there were a few other random things that could run Balloon, but uh, Heatran was definitely the main user of it, and uh, it could definitely, uh, it definitely got a great help out of it. But Balloon was definitely an interesting concept for an item, because grants you immunity, but then at the cost of it uh, popping whenever you get hit by it. So, hit by any kind of move, basically. But an interesting item regardless. And then we got Eviolite, and that that's another really interesting item because that made some uh, um, some um, not fully evolved Pokemon actually relevant, like Chansey, Porygon Two, Dusclops, and Gligar. I think those are the uh, best users of it. But like the only thing that I don't really like about the Eviolite is that uh, they didn't really design um, any new Pokemon or 
that or any kind of Pokemon that could really abuse it. The only things that could abuse it were some old Pokemon that then later on gained some evolutions because they were meant to be one stage evolutionary Pokemon in the first place. That's why they had high stats, but then they gained evolutions in the later generations. And that's the only reason these Pokemon were able to abuse uh, the Violet because they had high stats to begin with, as opposed to some new Pokemon. You know, you, you don't really see any new Pokemon that could really take advantage of it. It's all the old Pokemon that gained evolutions in the past, but you know, I guess that's just nitpicking. But it was kind of cool to see Chance Chansey actually outperform Blissey as something being uh, better at taking physical hits. And at the beginning of the tier, I remember it was absurd how well I, like, I think it was, yeah, I, it was a match against King Daddy D Mac when he was doing Wi-Fi battles. And I was, I was outraging uh, with my guard chum. And I was like, yeah, I'll easily take this uh, Chansey down. And I didn't even know about the Wildlife back then because nobody knew where, how to and where to get it really. And uh, nobody knew its name because the games were in Japanese, so we weren't able to easily hack it until we knew a few weeks later. But point being, I was outraging a freaking Chansey, and I was like, yeah, it's easy to a KO, and then it takes it like nothing. And I'm like, what in the world is going on here? Holy crap. But in the end, I think most of these, I think Chansey was the only thing that uh, stayed in the OE tier, or did it, I don't think it dropped down to Yu Yu. And if it would have, I think it would have gotten banned to BL. So I think Chansey, had, Chansey was really the best user of the Eviolite, but still kind of an interesting item that uh, gave some of these Pokemon that you never otherwise would see actually a purpose in the meta game. So that was really cool. And then on some other random items, I uh, got Rocky Helmet. Uh, you know, that was an interesting item uh, to troll some physical attackers mainly that make contact with you. Uh, but, you know, still leftover is kind of a better item on a bulky Pokemon. But, you know, something like uh, Iron Barb's Ferrothon could have more, uh, could add more residual damage. So it was kind of cool on some bulky Pokemon like that. But it's still kind of a gimmicky item that um, leftovers is still kind of a better. But, you know, still interesting item regardless. Then we got Red Card. That was kind of interesting with some entry hazards. Because uh, if you get hit, then you get phased out into something and you combine that with entry hazards. You saw something like Skarm and Fortress use that. It's kind of a gimmick, but you know, still an inter interesting concept for an item in Generation 5. You know, that basically for works as a fa facing, works as a facing item whenever you uh, make a move against this Pokemon. And, uh, you know, Fortress and Skarmory having also sturdy and you can face your opponent into something random and potentially set up uh, more hazards too. So uh, there is that, but still, I, I guess in the end, kind of a gimmicky item, but you know, still something kind of fun. And more water. And uh, then also um, Mental Herb, that thing got boosted up. So it would actually now uh, block Taunt and I believe also Encore and while it didn't have too big of an impact in the singles meta game I think some baton passing teams were abusing this item But in doubles uh, where you have a bunch of slow Pokemon setting up, setting up trick room and you have Pokemon trying to taunt them You could actually run this uh, mental herb on them and uh, That could prevent the taunt and you were able to get the momentum going on. So it had some sort of impact, at least in the doubles metagame, although I haven't really played doubles too much, but I do know it was somewhat used in the doubles metagame because uh, you could really get some good momentum going on with this um, mental herb there. And the top five you will get to hear on the next exciting episode where I will also talk for way too long, but it's kind of a trend that I seem to have going on. So, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, with one last time, with Generation 5. Goodbye, Gen 5. You have been good to me. Farewell.